Why are we so happy as kids, yet as we grow older, we become more and more unhappy? As kids, we don't really have much expectations for, for anything. Everything's kind of new to us and we kind of do whatever we feel like and we know what we feel like, we know what we want to do and that's what we want. And it's very, it's very fluid. It's like changing, it's like kind of random and spontaneous. But as we get older, as we go through school, as we have other people tell us what to do and we kind of grow into adolescence and then we become adults, we have all these kind of expectations and all these things that we're told we should do. And we have all these experiences that kind of inform us, this is good, this is bad. And that kind of creates this worldview that we have, this perspective that we have. And this can be really, really limiting because if you didn't have the most ideal upbringing, if you didn't have the most ideal beliefs kind of instilled in you, that the world is kind of open and it's not this one set way and that there's not certain things that kind of will give you what you want, then it can really, can really kind of damage you because then you get stuck in this kind of way and then you become really rigid and kind of unhappy because there's conditions for everything. You're not doing things for the sake of it, you're not doing it for the pleasure of it, you're doing it because you want something out of it. There's kind of like this condition where like, oh, so if I work, I'm selling my time to get this money so then I can buy these things that I want. And that's kind of like this exchange kind of thing. And then so many people are just looking for, okay, what's the most bang for my buck? What's gonna be, what's gonna make my life just better? And then they get caught in these kind of traps where they just follow along and they kind of flow with whatever society is going to tell them, you know, they get caught on the newest news thing like, oh my God, this is happening over here and this is happening over here and no, we can't have this person as president. No, we can't have that person as president. And they get caught in these kind of emotional straight up things because they're just distracted by all these external external sources that are kind of distracting them and they're like, always looking out for what's going to bring them what they want rather than cultivating a better internal kind of environment so that no matter what happens outside of you, no matter what you're experiencing, you can kind of be okay with it. And I think that's one of the hardest things to do, to have control over yourself because <laughs> it's incredibly hard because especially in our society, we have all these things, all these labels, all these conditions for certain things, you know, like, oh, get a good paying job. And like, especially in the social media these days, it's like, there's so many conditions. So there's like, kind of like these red pill kind of ideologies where it's like, you have to go to the gym all the time. You have to be a certain way and then you'll get something. And why would you put a condition on your experience of life? Why would you put a condition on you being happy and you being peaceful? Because then what happens when you don't have those things? What happens if you're not able to do those things? What are you going to do? Are you just going to kill yourself because there's no reason to live? I know this sounds extreme, but like, I'm trying to make a point here that we don't live for anything. We just live. And as kids, we kind of understood that we just did what we wanted to do. We did what we what excited us, what kind of gave us joy and pleasure. And we kind of had this innate kind of sense of ourselves of what we needed and what we wanted to do. And there was no conditions, there was nothing to do. And you may say like, oh, as an adult, as an adolescent, you know, I can't just do this. I have all these obligations that I have to do. I have all these things that I want to do. You know, I can't just eat ice cream as I wanted to as a kid. I can't just chase all these things and like play video games all the time because then I feel terrible about it. And that's the thing, kids chased what was pleasurable for them for the sake of it, but then of course they were restrained, restrained or hopefully restrained or partially restrained, restrained or maybe not at all by their parents or society. And of course, as we become adults, we have to do certain things, you know, um, there's things that kind of suck that we have to do, you know, we have to do it, we have to find work to earn money, to make a living. We have to, well, it's good to take care of our health. It's good to do these things that give us joy. But these, some of these things that we don't like doing, like 
taking out the trash or cleaning and cleaning up after ourselves and all these sorts of things. They they may kind of suck, but as an adult, that's kind of like a responsibility that you have to have. And you can still find kind of joy in that, in doing it, in, in the cleaning, because that gives you a clearer kind of sense. You know, you have to tend to the garden or else it's going to fall apart or else it's going to decay or else the weeds are going to grow up. And this is the same with everything. It's the same with your life. It's the same with your relationships. It's the same with your health and your well-being and your job and that sort of thing. And, you know, taking care of your health doesn't have to be extreme. It doesn't have to be someone else's ideal. It doesn't have to be... Um, like for me, it doesn't have to be this bodybuilder kind of thing. It doesn't have to be, I find myself really wanting to have this kind of <laughs> like Greek statue physique to grow my muscle to that sort of sense. And the more that I kind of want it, the more that sometimes it kind of feels further away or like it's kind of putting a condition on and that creating a discrepancy where I can't feel okay with what I am and where I am. And then it kind of causes this suffering and it's kind of unnecessary because even if I had that, well, would I be any better? Would I still, will I have anything that I actually wanted? Like, is that going to actually bring me joy? And these attachments to things, these conditions that we create on ourselves are just kind of limiting our happiness, limiting our experience. You know, there's like, oh, I can only be happy if I can have this or I can have that. And that's not really true. And you may have to say like, oh, well, well, what I have at the moment, it kind of sucks. It's kind of terrible. And I'm not telling you that, or well, for me, I'm not telling myself that I don't have to work out because I do still enjoy it. There, do, there are still parts of it that excite me, like kind of like a child where I'm like, oh, this is kind of exciting. I should explore this. And... I'm trying not to get so rigid in these ways and kind of let it flow in a more natural way, but also realize that me as a person, I like to have some sort of structure, some sort of semblance to tie myself down to, but also realizing that that's kind of like this illusion of control and at the end that we're all kind of at the mercy of our feeling minds. And if we don't get in touch with how we're feeling, then that's going to really direct us because the reason why we can struggle to change, why we can struggle to have the things that we want, to have a life that we want, is because at the back of our minds, well, for me, I found that I was trying to control myself, trying to put myself in these scenarios where I thought would get me the results that I wanted. And it was really rigid. It's like, I have to have this, so then it gets that. I have to have this, so then it gets that. I just lost my train of thought, sorry, but what I was trying to say is that I get too, I was getting too rigid in the ways that I was doing things and not allowing myself to live and not allowing myself to be, accept my experiences as they are. And I was trying to beat my feeling mind, my feelings into submission to try and get what I wanted because I thought that's what would give me what I want. But then I realized how many times I'd tried this in the past and it would always fall back. And of course, willpower is kind of important. You know, we do need to do some things that we necessarily don't want to do that kind of, you know, benefit our life, like tending to the garden, as I said, you know, whether that's our minds or our bodies and health and relationships. But these feelings, they will still, they will still lie in there. And as a male, this can be kind of hard. You know, as a man, we don't really get in touch with our feelings. We don't really get to know them or understand them properly because we think, oh, that's kind of like a girly thing. You know, I have to be a big man. I have to be really masculine. I have to be in control of these things. But really, these things are actually controlling us. Like they're the ones that have the, the hands on the steering wheel. And we've got to create a better relationship with it because 
they're going to be there no matter what, you know. And in the past, you know, when these things would creep up and they creep up and they build up and then once the tension builds up to a certain point, it kind of cracks. And then when it cracks, your thinking mind, your kind of logical mind makes up reasons for you to be doing these things that the feeling mind wants to do. It's like, why haven't you given me what I wanted? Why haven't you given me these things that kind of make me happy? And it needs some sort of satisfaction, you know, it needs something to please it. It wants something now, it wants something in the now. It's like immediate and it's feeling and it's emotional and it just wants it now. And once that gets too strong, your thinking mind's just gonna go, all right, our body's screaming for this. Let's find all the reasons to kind of um, affirm this kind of belief, affirm these things that we want. And if you let that tension build up too much, then that's gonna be really extreme. And like for me in the past that wanted, there was this voice that was kind of like, oh, well, if I'm gonna keep doing this to myself, then what am I living for? What am I going to live for? Because I can't control myself to do these sorts of things. I can't stay consistent doing the things that I wanna do that I know will benefit my health. And it was like this condition that I had put on myself, like I have to do this, I have to keep doing this, I just have to ignore these feelings that come up and go through it. And so then I can be happy. And that was the problem, was that I wanted to be happy, I wanted to be peaceful, I wanted to be content in my life, but I was always searching for something. I was always attaching to something external to try and satisfy me or fulfill me. And I was trying to deny all these feelings that I was feeling, all of this depression, this nihilism, this just sadness. And just because you feel sad, just because you feel stressed, just because I feel anxious doesn't mean that I, I can't be happy in that, I can't accept that. And I'm not sure if you've ever experienced this, but sometimes when I feel sad and when I feel kind of depressed, you know, there's kind of like this solace in it where you can kind of just give into it and you can still kind of be happy. You can still go about life. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm feeling so bad. And then you kind of give into it and then, or, or even try and not give into it. You fight with it. You fight with it. And you try and control it and you try and put it away, but then it's still there and it grows. And Maybe that will, all, maybe this experience of depression, of this loneliness, of this never feeling satisfied will always kind of be with me. But if I'm always going to deny it, if I'm always going to push it away, then it's just going to grow or it's always going to be there in the background, you know, kind of like this chattering voice. And I'm starting to realize that now I have to live with it. I have to be with it. I have to kind of accept it. And there's been times, you know, where I just go for a walk or something when I'm in this kind of mood and just watching the sunset or watching the ocean or watching something. And it's just kind of like this peace, like the ocean just kind of is, you know, it's like angry and it's crashing, but it just kind of is. And there's like this weird sense of like just satisfaction and being in this moment of feeling depressed. I know this sounds really weird, but like there can be kind of contentment in that and kind of this feeling of ease. <sighs> and another thing that I've realized is that when you get caught in these rigid kind of things in these set ways, you become really rigid, you become, you get stuck in habit and you kind of do the same thing. Like I've been practicing for a play and it's kind of interesting the more you go into it the more depth it is and yesterday i just had a walk with my friend who's in it and we just kind of went through it and we had fun we did it really extreme and we were just playing with it to see how we could get it to work better and one thing he noticed was that i would often look down and when i looked down i was in my head i was thinking about things too much and i was like very closed off to the world but and so he told me to look at the horizon and that made just this weird difference, you know, it was such this small little thing, but just lifting up my gaze and seeing everything and being aware of it all and kind of looking out, you know, straight ahead, you know, also having my head up and kind of experiencing things as they are and just being with it rather than like kind of this hunched, closed off way, just really opened up my performance and made me talk much better and helped me to get out of my head and, and say the words that I already knew in my head from the script.
these kind of videos are getting into different topics that I still don't quite understand, you know, they're more spiritual, they're very deep, they're, there's no, <laughs> there's not really a final answer, I don't think, it's kind of not doing something, not having a goal or having a set thing, it's kind of in this being, in this kind of moment, kind of way, this way of living, whatever you want to call it, Zen, Tao, Wu Wei, that's the kind of direction that I'm kind of being going towards now because what's worked for me in the past, what's brought me here has been beneficial, but now I need to kind of let that go and explore this new kind of unknown area and not just transcend it, but transcend and include it to grow myself as a person to reach this com discomfort zone and kind of grow. So thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for watching my videos. If you do, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.